congratulations. We are at closing, closing day. day. Yes. Woohoo! Let's go over what to expect on this amazing day. Monumental, even. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, it Monumental is. day. Yeah, this has been quite the process. Yeah. All right, let's go over having your down payment cash to close ready in a cashier's check or wired to the title company. Well, you can do either one. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be wiring, remember, we mentioned this before in a previous video, wire fraud is a big scare right now. Instructions are never going to be sent. Again, never going to be sent to you by email. And so you want to, um, those will be sent through many times a two-factor authorization code through your text um, or verbally and make sure you're talking to the right person at the title company. And uh, cashier's check, um, Personal checks make it harder, so cashier's checks are better. Um, try to have a cashier's check and take that in with you to your closing, and then you drop it off when you're gone. And you'll, of course, as we talked about before, you'll have um, that number um, of how much you're supposed to bring in. And sometimes it's crazy in this industry. It depends on the month that you're in, but I mean, we're always trying to get you that information early, but sometimes it just might be at the wire, especially if you're doing a quick closing but we're going to try to get you all that information so you know exactly how much you're supposed to bring in. So. And it also kind of a little bit depends on the lender, making sure they've got their information in and balanced with the title company. Yeah. That's right. So when do we set up utilities and how do we do that? Well, um, a lot of those you can do beforehand. Um, some of them you cannot because they want proof that you actually own the property before they'll allow you to put those in your name. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're going to get an email from our transaction coordinators that kind of say who the utility providers are. And uh, what we recommend is you try to have your utilities set up to where they turn on the day that it actually records, mm -hmm. you know, the day that it's funded. And uh, because then and then the people selling the home are going to also do the same thing because then the power never goes out. The gas never gets turned off and it just transitions over without like a setup fee, right? Mm -hmm. It saves you a little bit of money. And so, for example, the power company, uh, you can do beforehand and set that up. Uh, the gas company, you can do beforehand and things like that. Internet, if you want to try to get that scheduled, um, that's good as well. Um, another really important one that I think a lot of people can tend to forget because once you sign and once it gets recorded and it's now your home, it, the craziness begins. I mean, you mm. have to move in, you have to do all that stuff. And so one of the things that's not mandatory and, you know, your power is pretty mandatory because the power is going to turn off. So, you know, you have to do that. But there's this form called the homeowner's exemption form. And this is from the Bonneville County tax, and it's a tax form that basically... Is it only in Bonneville County? Well, it's a statewide thing, mm. but it's managed through each county. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And basically, if you own a home, your primary residence, you only get one in the state, um, then you can actually get an exemption for up to $100,000 on your taxes. So that's a pretty substantial amount, um, especially you know, the lower the value of your home the bigger break that is. So you're gonna to go to the county and you're going to, and it says, has the instructions on there of where you go and the address and you go there and you turn that in. And then as long as you never move, you'll always keep the exemption on there. You don't have to renew it. And so all those things are, are very important to be able to have all set up. So that was a, a law with that exemption just changed this year. Yeah. Where you used to have a deadline, you only gotta file one time and if you miss that deadline, you have to spend the whole year before you can file. Sometimes paying yeah. double the amount of taxes. Yeah. Because right. if somebody before didn't have the exemption, you'd pay their taxes. But now mm -hmm. it's, you can file it immediately at any time during the year. Yeah, one of those laws that when they changed, it was like, silly. Why yeah. didn't they do this before? Oh, yeah. You know, why were, why was it so complicated? Yeah. So yeah, that was so a good So it's a good change. one. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. And so all of this happens with the signing and the settlement at the, the title company. And, and you will be in touch with your transaction coordinator in our team and together choose a time that works best for you to go in and sign all the documents. So if you have any questions at all, call your transaction coordinator on our team and we'll make sure we get that squared away. Another thing is you want to be on time. Uh, it's a busy day yeah. and the title company is going to be busy. Everything's scheduled. And so make sure when you show up, you show up on time. And with the right people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, who, who needs to attend? Whoever's name is on the contract yep. needs to be there. Well, what if Even, I'm married and my spouse isn't on the contract? Do they need to be there? That's what I was going to mention. Mm -hmm. Even if your spouse isn't signing on the loan, 
or in the named in the contract, they have to sign the deed of trust. They have to acknowledge that that they're, because we're in a community property state and Mm -hmm. by law they own half of everything. And so they have to acknowledge that. Including half of the debt. That's right. Yeah. So they, they, they have to sign that they know that this property is being purchased by their spouse, sole and separate from them. Gotcha. Um, also, think about some loans will have a cosigner. Mm-hmm. And so those cosigners need to show up and everybody needs to sign and, and uh, do their part at the closing. Yeah. An important thing probably to mention as well is if you're not in town the mm-hmm. day of closing and you know that, mm-hmm. then please let everybody know involved because it's not hard. I mean, as long as you're at a place that has a FedEx place and an internet service and a printer, you can sign anywhere in the country, but we just have to With email, a notary. With a notary. We have to email the documents to you. You have to print them. You have to sign them in front of a notary and you got to FedEx them back and it's no problem. It's actually quite simple, but it just takes a little extra time to prepare. If you let us know a two, day before yeah. that you are not going to be in town the day of signing, you're not going to close on time. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, yeah. So in in this, how long does closing take? Um, so if you're buying the property with cash, fifteen to twenty minutes, mm-hmm. thirty minutes max. Depends on how many questions you have. Um, and if you are getting a loan, it's anywhere from thirty minutes to an hour. Typically, forty five minutes. If you're uh, if you're there's a lot. I mean, it's a good stack of papers. Every lawsuit that a bank loses. Boom, Add another piece of paper. They had two to three more pages. <laughs> That's yep. right. Yep. So I'm sure in uh, 50 years, it'll probably be <laughs> a book. Yeah, That's right. It yeah. is a book now. No. It is a book now. So, Jeremy, does anybody co- is anyone going to be there with us at closing? You know, we, we uh, hope that through this process and information, you have so much knowledge of what's going to happen that you could go alone. But as a courtesy, you, we will probably have a representative from the team there, and probably your lender will be there with you. So, Chad, what do we need to bring to closing? Well, the first thing that you need to do is bring yourself. I mean, you're buying the property, so you need to be able to sign. And uh, it's important that you bring a government-issued ID of some type. Can I ask a question? If I'm not available, could someone with a power of attorney sign? Um, Yes. Potentially. But you don't want to have your power of attorney person show up the day of closing and not let anybody know. Mm. Because many times the actual power of attorney might work in some things, but it might not work with real estate. And so you gotcha. need, we need to get a copy of that power of attorney and make sure everything's fine. But Makes no, sense. we've seen that before, where power of attorney sign. Okay. Um, but uh, it needs to be specific to how the title company wants it done. Got it. So it's important also to have a government-issued ID with you. Um, your lender many times is going to require that you have two forms of ID. Mm. And usually that's done beforehand, but sometimes they might ask for it at the end. Mm. So it's not a bad idea to bring two forms of ID just to be safe. And that is if you're getting financing. But more than likely, you just need the one form of ID, a government-issued ID. Um, You want to bring your photo. With a photo. Yeah, with a photo, of course. Because, again, the title company has to verify that you're really that that's person. Right. Yeah. And they have to notarize. And they have to notarize. Yeah. Saying and that's that you why you have them. to show up. That's why you have to show up. Yep. Important. <laughs> Very you gotta important. Be there. you got to be there. Don't leave yourself at home. And then as far as funds, you want to bring um, a cashier's check. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to bring, you know, the money. Mm-hmm. Or if you're wiring it, you need to... Um, get those instructions. Never by email. Never by email. Never by email. We can't say that enough. If you get instructions to send money by email, call the title company. You're immediately. probably never going to see your money again. Yep. So um, let's talk about the difference between closing, funding, and recording, Jeremy. Three things. Closing is typically referred to as the day you go to the title company and sign the documents. Funding It comes into play when the lender receives those documents back, reviews everything, and says, here is the money, and they wire it to the title company. Fun or recording is a third thing, and that's where the title company says, okay, I have the money from the lender. I have all the documents from the buyer and the seller. I will take these documents to the county, and I will deed the property from the seller to the buyer. Now the buyer is the actual titled owner. Gotcha. That is recording. Gotcha. When does the seller sign? So typically the seller signs in the same time frame as the buyer. Mm -hmm. Um, 
in our area, we never, I've in 20 years, I've never had the seller and the buyer sign together. Mm -hmm. In some markets, that's a common thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they're at the same table at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, never seen that here, yeah. and I'm actually glad. I mean, that yeah. would kind of be awkward for our market, at least, because yeah. we're not used to it. But the seller typically signs a day or two before closing. Uh, many times it's the day of is typically what we see. And uh, it doesn't take them very long at all. It's 15 or 20 minutes, whereas when, uh, when the buyer signs, it takes a lot longer. Yeah. Okay, so remind me again, Jeremy, how do I know how much to bring to closing? So the closing disclosure from the lender that you will get three days at least before closing, mm -hmm. we'll have that broken down to you. The bottom number will say, this is how much you need to bring in. Gotcha. And then the title company will also have it prepared and the transaction yeah. coordinator on our team, coordinator will review that. And then before you go to the title company, we will have a conversation to make sure it's correct. Gotcha, gotcha. When can I move in, Chad? Well, um, I mean, that's a really, really important thing to discuss because the home isn't yours until it's actually, the county says it is. Recorded. When it's actually recorded and that document is done and then it's your home. So you can't really move in until it's your home. If you move in early and it's not your home, you're actually trespassing, right? And so anyway, you move in once it's recorded. Gotcha. After it's recorded. What happens if... Um what happens if we don't fund on the date? Like, let's say we're signing on a Friday mm -hmm. and we don't get funded, but we are planning to move in on the weekend. Um, well, it's not your home, so mm. you can't move in until it's your home. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Jeremy, will the house be clean? That is a good question because we hope that it's clean. But unless we have specified in our purchase and sell agreement when we went to buy the property that said we want it professionally cleaned, then there's really no obligation the seller has to leave it spotless. And so clean means a lot of things to each person, right? And so if you want it professionally cleaned, make sure you and your agent write that in the initial contract. Otherwise, it's, there's too much ambiguity and, and clean to you and clean to me may be different when you walk into that house after closing. Yeah, and I think to most sellers, they think they leave it clean, yeah. but their clean might be filthy to you. That's right. And so it's, yeah, it's, that's a hard one. It's yeah. a hard one. But for the most part, the house is empty and it's usually cleaned pretty well. That's right. So. Gotcha. What if we're selling another house and those funds we're using to buy this house and it's all happening on the same day? Mm. How does that work? So that's an amazing thing because, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's you can do that now. I mean, the power of the internet, the power of, you know, overnight shipping and all those things. So basically the main thing though, is you, have, you just have to coordinate with us, with your agent. You have to coordinate that with your lender, coordinate that with the title company. Mm -hmm. They need to know where you're closing and all of those funds. I mean, there's sometimes there's four or five deals that are all dominoed based upon each other. And those funds can go all over the country right. to make it all happen all at once. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing, it's a beautiful thing to actually watch. <laughs> it is, yeah. But the thing is, it's a little tricky because if one person messes up, mm -hmm. it stalls everything. It's so like a domino. Every, it's a domino. So yeah. everybody mm -hmm. needs to be coordinated. We have to know if so that's the case. So the title company need to know my title company that I'm closing with? Is that a good idea? Do they have to talk yeah, to each other? No, they need Absolutely. to talk. Mm -hmm. One time I had someone who didn't let us know and they scheduled their closing for a couple of days later and then they got a check and then they waited and like got a hotel and then got the money and took it to that city and said, here's my check. And it was like, oh, well, you could have done all this on the same day and bought the house. So it's just a matter of making sure you know your options, but you can totally, uh, you know, sell and buy on the same day, even if, in your, if, even if you're in a different location. That's fantastic. So now we're all done. Congratulations, Congratulations and welcome, welcome to, to the, the MMC, MMC family. family. But it's not over yet. There's actually one final step. What? One step final step. Breaks. So we want to know who you think we should know. Mm. Because when you're in the middle of this process, you run across people who are thinking of buying. I mean, it's a conversation piece to about everybody you talk to. And so when you talk to someone who's looking at buying or looking at selling, we would love it if you would recommend them to us or give us their information because we want to be able to help them the same way that we're helping you. And uh, we want to be able to, to take care of everybody with their real estate needs. And yeah. that's how we grow our business. That's exactly right. The other thing that we would ask 
that if you had a great experience, we would love it if you would leave an online review. Those are so important when uh, people are choosing which realtor to use. So you'll get an email with the links to the important websites where you can leave us a, a review and hopefully it's five stars. If you didn't receive a five-star experience, um, we're always looking for ways to improve. Absolutely. And so please call us and let us know. And uh, we're always, you know, we want the feedback and we want to be able to know. And uh, if there's something that you really loved, please let us know as well. Mm -hmm. And we might be able to add on that and build upon that. So our office number is 208-538-2112, 208-538-2112. And you can always email me directly. My email is chad at mmcidaho.com. That's C-H-A-D at mmcidaho.com. Great. So finally, this is it. We hope that you'll like and follow our Facebook pages, the Murdoch Man Marine Company and the Nosy Neighbors. We do fun customer appreciation events and contests, and we'd love to have you involved now that you're part of the family. The Nosy Neighbors is a page that highlights local businesses, and we are sure passionate about our area. And we would love to you if you're new to our area, or maybe you just didn't know about it. Um, what began as, as uh, some simple recordings on cell phones to help showcase local businesses for the real estate community has blossomed into a full-blown team of people who are working together to be a resource for longtime residents and newcomers alike. If you're active online, chances are you've seen Jessica Carden and Chad Murdoch, otherwise known as the Nosy Neighbors, and it's Nosy spelled with a K-N-O-W. Um, the di this dynamic duo works together to bring information to people in the greater Idaho Falls area and beyond. They feature all of the great local businesses, events, and offerings in our city. From simple beginnings, uh, Jessica and Chad have been the face of this fun and highly informative effort to highlight our city. I personally think a big part of the winning formula, sorry Chad, is Jessica's slightly <laughs> sassy personality. <laughs> In a little over a year, they become local celebrities known for taking people on a journey with each episode. They always feature some interesting learning about each business, event, or activity, or landmark that they um, visit. They've done hundreds, or maybe it's at this point you're approaching a thousand or something, <laughs> but uh, you've done uh, lots of these informative videos, um, and they do it with creativity. Uh, and I forgot to mention that all the time and talent they employ uh, to do these interviews and create these uh, videos is done free of charge. Uh, so they, they are basically going out and doing free commercials. Um, they help to bring attention to local businesses. They help educate residents on local events and activities and make people say, I want to go there. Um, in, in so doing, they become de facto ambassadors for our city, and we look good through your lens. Uh, Jessica and Chad and the very special production team that makes you possible, we want to thank you for these free, fun videos, your dedication and commitment uh, to helping uh, showcase and highlight this community, uh, we, we thank you for all that you've done. And um, this is why uh, we believe you deserve the award for Outstanding Community Commitment. The Nosy Neighbors keeping you in the know. The Nosy Neighbors keeping you in the know. Nosy Neighbors keeping you in the know. The Nosy Neighbors keeping you in the know. Nosy Neighbors keeping you in the know. So the nosy neighbors keeping, keeping you, you in, in the, the know. know. The nosy neighbors are gonna keep you in, in the, the know. know. We have some really amazing local businesses and we'd love you to participate those. Get to know them. They're so special and the best part about our area is the people. Mm -hmm. And we have some really amazing, we, um, amazing businesses that are owned by local people. We also have a Facebook group and it's called Life in Idaho Falls. Feel free to request to join that as well. It's a community page yeah. where lots of members of our community, we have over 4,000 members, they, they just share with each other. They utilize, it's a great place to meet people and to, to ask for information and get feedback from people in our community. We are sure passionate about our community and we wanna make sure you get the full experience. So thank you for trusting us in your home buying experience. And we look forward to a long lasting relationship. We're in the know on what's going on and we know who can help. So please feel free to give us a call. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.